uh, it's enough to see what kind of noise was raised in Israel when the uh, Israeli Air Force sent the Stones bomb in Gaza for a justified reason, having killed civilians, to see that uh, it's not a matter of world opinion. On the contrary, if in fact, and that's what uh, you have said, if in fact armies commit things anyhow and are criticized, and your line on information would be adopted by the Israelis, this would only be so much more a reason to send the Air Force, and at least as a counter position taking to the woman who said the massacre, the massacre, to quote this Israeli father who said that Israel's then Minister of Defense was actually the one who killed his son in Jenin. Well, Which at least we should remember. Yeah, yeah listen, I, 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 I recognize the fact that this opinion is not necessarily taken, but I'm talking about an immediate sense of view. In a sen media sense, what I'm saying, will go, and I believe, will go over far more effectively. Because the reality is that Israel, no matter what, kills a lot of civilians, just like any other military. You know, it does. And, and when they say they treat civilians nice and they go into houses and, uh, excuse me, I'm coming to your house, I'm not going to put a hole through your wall, and I'm taking your kitchen apart and, and throwing you out, it looks horrible. It is horrible. But every army does it. It's just that Israel puts itself in this funny position like, oh, we don't do it and everybody else does. And, and, and that's the problem. You know, they do it, and so does the American military do it, and so does the British. The French just killed a whole bunch of people. Uh, I think yesterday, 12 on the streets, they destroyed the whole Air Force. They're not apologetic about it. You know, it's this self-apology that fits, you know, leads to this whole thing. Uh, Arye and then Dr. Yol Fishman. And just before I ask my question, to lay this issue to rest, I think that the point is, Martin, uh, the bottom line is this, and I can say from direct knowledge of the cabinet discussion in the middle of the Janine uh, battle, the cabinet considered both issues. The cabinet decided to continue in the, the, the house to house combat in order to reduce civilian casualties and in order to make sure that as a result of more civilian college casualties, we didn't lose the media war, as it were. But the point I think that Martin's trying to make is that that doesn't matter. The point is not whether or not we have a, a higher moral you know, standard to which we hold ourselves, and perhaps, as you're saying, that the world hold us, holds us to, uh, and therefore we ought to argue that point. The point Martin's making is that point is not arguable, and therefore the argument we need to make with the world media and or with our detractors is War is hell. Civilians are killed in war. We don't kill any more civilians in our warfare Seriously. than do other countries at war. Let's get off that topic. We regret the death of civilians, just as America, France, or others do. My question, Martin, to you is, uh, I think, with great familiarity uh, with uh, European media, and English, uh, British media in particular, there's no question you have an uphill battle. I wish you luck in trying to get this broadcast. What efforts, uh, if any, are you making, or your backers, or, uh, or the Global Television Network, to... Uh, have this movie screened at least at the level of the decision makers, whether it's within the, the media world, uh, for, in, for instance, French, German, or, or Italian media, and or political decision makers, either in private screenings or in uh, community center screenings or the like. Uh, in other words, doing an end run if the media isn't going to show it, the, the mass media, making sure that it's broadcast and distributed at some level. It is being distributed. I mean, the chairman of the company, which is a pretty powerful company, by the way, Can West, is a very powerful company. It's got outlets in Australia, Ireland, and, and in Canada. Is is uh, always uh, He met with the chairman of ITV just last week. The chairman of ITV said it's too much of a point of view to put on the air. Well, of course. I mean, they'll put out of... <laughs> I think it was Barbara Plett the other day started to cry on uh, right, uh, BBC Radio over the death of Arafat. Now, if I was to start to cry over the, I don't know, death of Sharon, if he went or something like that, boy, would I, would I be blasted. So, I mean, uh, it's a real problem, you know. You, you just got to try your best. And it's being shown in certain universities in other countries, uh, certainly a lot of Jewish circles. But uh, I would prefer to get to the other circles as well, and I do. It does get there, but it's, it's hard. And we do our best, you know. I mean, I, uh, we can simply only do that. And Israel, by the way, in Israel, it's amazing some of the reactions you get too. I mean, uh, the we're the Cinematheque, for example, showed the Janine Janine film, so we're trying to to get this one on. And there's been a lot of pressure to put it on. So somebody from the Cinematheque looks and says, "Okay, we'll put Martin Himmler's movie on." You know, I mean, if I got that in Europe, <laughs> wow. You know, I mean, here I'm Martin Himmler. You know, well, they didn't call you Hitler. Yeah. It doesn't rhyme so well. <laughs> You know, like this is from a, you know, the, the, some of the film establishment in this country. So it's, uh, you know, it's not easy.
Uh, Joel and then Nina Goldstein. Yes, uh, I would like to say two points. Uh, the first point really supports <coughs> you, and that's that uh, Henry Kissinger wrote in the White House years that the important point is the decision to use force. The amount of force that is, necessa that is necessary is irrelevant. So if you make the decision, one can use whatever force is necessary. Mm -hmm. It has the same ramifications. And in fact, in the case of the uh, first intifada, Kissinger's advice, which was not followed, was to use unlimited force to put it down. And, uh, and maybe it wasn't a, a bad piece of advice. In, in we, that's a theoretical question. But, it, but it, it would support your point of view. And the other thing that was interesting, and I uh, would invite a remark from you, was in the, the, the Giovanni interview, she wanted to disqualify the interlocutor because right. he was Jewish. And we saw that, and, and we know that there, uh, it has appeared in England and other newspapers. If you could say a word about that, uh, I would find it very interesting. Well, well actually, there was an interesting article uh, well, let me go back to the what happened there. So uh, she said to me, so you're Jewish? And I said, what difference does it make? He says, well, you know, I have a friend. It was just very long, so I wasn't going to go into it. I have a friend who's an Orthodox, of course he's a friend, and was, was an Orthodox Jew. And, uh, and, you know, I really respect him because he had the guts to say, I can't cover the Middle East because I'm not capable of being objective about it. In Britain, there's this sort of thing that Jews have very strange brains. And that uh, if you're Jewish, yeah, you can't cover the Middle East. I mean, obviously, Brits can cover Ireland. That's not a problem. Or Muslims can cover the Middle East. That's not a problem, too. But Jews, something's funny with their brains, and um, they can't seem to cover the Middle East well. There is this, this thing going on there. And I found very interesting, there was a, a commentator uh, for the Guardian, Julie Birchall, who was on her way out to the Times, actually, so she felt a little bit free to write what she wants to write, put a, an op-ed piece, an opinion piece in her newspaper, talking about... Well, she did not see this difference between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. She said a lot of it is mixed. And in a very sort of facetious, and, uh, and she's not Jewish, by the way, in a very sort of facetious uh, uh, and uh, satirical way, she suggested that every Jew who writes about the Middle East in a newspaper put a yellow star beside his name, so everybody will know he's Jewish, and then realize you've got to take what he says, that he's imbalanced and he's got problems with his brain. And, uh, but I thought, that, you know, it took a certain, made a certain point. And since she's not Jewish, I guess she can know what she's talking about. <laughs> uh, Pnina, and then afterwards, Rabbi Moshe Edelman. Um, I found out you mentioned that you were trying to get it um, onto PBS in the United States. Yeah. I wanted, could you elaborate on that? Well, it's a different system in the United States. Uh, to get something on, they let lots of different views go on, on television. The trick there is financial. What's basically happening, we're trying to do this there, is um, they'll give you the airtime and they'll distribute it if, it's a, if it fits a certain relevance. And I think this will not be a problem in the United States. Uh, but you've got to get a certain amount of sponsors on the thing and then you put it out and market it basically yourself. And we're trying to do that right now in the United States. Moshe? Uh, I'm continuing this. Hmm. I'm not talking about the film. <coughs> you have said again and again today, it's difficult to get it out. Right. When you sit with these people, what do they say? They say it's one-sided, unbalanced, Zionist propaganda, uh, and distorted. <laughs> you know? In fact, I have different sides there. I say, well, did you guys go to the Israeli army? I went to the Alexa Martyr Brigades. You know, they sat with me. Did I not put what they said? Did I not talk to Saib Erekat and give him a chance to say what he said? You know, he thought the question was relevant. Did I not talk to the BBC? Did I talk to all these journalists? Did I give Janine a chance to speak? Well, it's one side Zionist propaganda that I mean, don't put it as blatantly as I'm telling you. Like the ITV head will say, well, it's a rather too one, too much of a point of view thing. But the implication is clear. I mean, don't kid yourself. I mean, you can scream yourself blue in the face. You only have to get to a certain point. That's why I say the self-apologetic approach is just a waste of time. When people say that Israel, the world holds Israel to a different standard. It's not holding Israel to a different standard. It's basically finding what it can do to, you know, slap Israel with the same standard. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, and every journalist comes from a point of view. I'm coming from a point of view. Janine comes from a point of view. All the people come from a point of view. And you know, the real. I tell them also, the trick is to put all the different point of views out. Let people see different point of views. Because it's difficult to think that not one. I'm trying. Maybe I'll be lucky. Give me a chance. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying. Listen, I'm also trying. Like, I tried. I thought Saban, who owns, you know, that channel would have, and then he loves it. He saw it. 
I can't get on the air. I get, you know, he's got his problems too. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying. Let's see. I mean, also, now I'm going to go be in Holland too and say, look, this Theo Van Gogh thing, listen to this, you know. We'll see. Uh, last question, Avna. Uh, well, I want to wish you luck, of course, with uh, all your attempts to get on every possible channel. Sure. It's, it's worth it. Seeing, right? okay. um, on the, just a, a very brief comment on the matter of the holier than thou, which you quite correctly pointed out, we're infected with. Uh, this was already um, discussed by Tom Friedman in the book from Beirut to Jerusalem. Yeah. And one of his points was that it's, it's not like asking, is it us who, are, who, are, who think that way, or is it the world who thinks of us? It's, it's really a kind of chicken and egg argument. Yeah. Because, uh, he says that the world needs to see Israel in a certain, in a certain light. And in, in, on the one hand, the world puts us, puts us on a pedestal, expects us to be holier than them. And on the other hand, it degrades Israel and it attacks Israel. I disagree with that. I just, I think. I'm just. I understand. You know, I know his argument, and I completely disagree with that. You know, uh, I think there are some. Listen, I know when I'm hearing a different thing. When I hear a, a person come to a group and say, "Look, I don't like Israel's policies in the West Bank, and I don't like its, uh, it's a land grab, it's this and that." But you know, Israel somehow has got to find a place. And yes, the Palestinians have been right, but somewhere, people have got to change their attitude. I, you know, I make a, a, a big distinction between a legitimate criticism, which and there's plenty against Israel that you can make. Where it looks at it is like it lives here and it's in this part of the world and you know maybe I agree with it or don't agree with it but there's that that attitude which I hear in a lot of places in Europe and and America and Canada to the one like <coughs> these apartheid policies these racist <coughs> policies what they're really getting at I said what are you trying to get at? what you're trying to say is that the whole entity is illegitimate you know the whole the whole place is illegitimate it's a racist apartheid entity that has no no matter what it does so I mean, where's the argument coming from there's there's these you can hear the difference very easily. And, and what I'm saying is that, you know, uh, uh, this holier than that, I don't believe anybody's holding Israel to a higher standard than anybody else. Some just are trying to find the higher standard to slam it, and some consider Israel at the same standard they consider every other country, in which case you have very legitimate criticism and argument. The whole point is, let's stop being hypocritical about it. You can sense it, you can smell it, where it's coming from. Let's say, you know, are, are you taking this attitude that just Israel has absolutely no right to be in this world, in which case you can say, let's, let's talk at this level. It doesn't matter what the country does, you're going to say that. And to someone else, you can say, well, you can bring in all the arguments about the different countries, how they fight or not fight, etc. I mean, Tom Fried made the same article, the same, um, the same argument about three weeks ago in an article I read, I don't know if you read it, where he said that uh, they call the American soldiers in Iraq the Jews. <laughs> You know, and, uh, and uh, you know, the, he said, well, it's obviously alluded to anti-Semitism, and there's a lot of anti-Semitism in the Arab world, but he said, but you know, if Israel would just act a little differently, maybe it would be different. I beg to argue that, you know, no matter what Israel does, for the people who, will, for those who will consider the American soldiers in Iraq the Jews, nothing will change that opinion. And for others who say, well, you know, there's places to move and to, to argue and not argue, I think that, that uh, there is room. For instance, I find the Palestinians far less anti-Semitic than the Europeans. I think that, I mean, there's some that, you know, you can deal with and some you can't, but I find them far less anti-Semitic. They use anti-Semitism as a weapon. It's very smart to use it. Why not? It works very well for them. Do you differentiate between Hamas, for example, and PLO? Well, the funny thing is, even Hamas, okay? Even Hamas. I sat, I've had talks with Yassin and Rantizi. I've met both of them. I've met Yassin several times. And you know something? Even then, it's a different type of argument. You know, like, like Yassin can sit with a rabbi, for example, which he has, and the discussion will be very different than uh, a discussion where somebody, let's say in Europe, is anti-Semitic and would sit with a settler rabbi. Yassin sat with settler rabbis. His argument, the thing I liked about Rantizi and Yassin is that they were very honest. These people are very principled people. They really were. They said, look, this is an Islamic area. It's not an issue of 67 or 7 like that. We will do what we have to do to achieve it. You know, to kill this person, that person, these people, we are just not going to stop till we achieve it. You know, not my life is important to somebody else. I will go for it. And he would say that to any rabbi, and he would say, "Look, and once it's an Islamic area, if you want to live here, you know, within the Islamic society, it can be arranged." But that is still very different than no matter what you do, you're a Nazi, you're a, you're a, a, the personification of evil in the world, etc. There's something very emotional and deep rooted that I felt in Europe that I don't feel here. Good. Up to Martin, thank you very, very much.